All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about planning tactics, um, kind of moving through this uh, module in terms of the different ways we can go around uh, building off the last module in terms of managerial planning um, and the different ways we can go around planning. So, you know, I hope that everyone has come to the realization, you know, if you want to be in that managerial, that supervisor, um, that administrative role, you know, the frontline supervisors, the frontline managers really are going to be you guys, if that's the role you want to see yourself in, you are going to be the foundation for operational success for the organization. And a lot of this is going to come with, you know, how do you deal with change and how do you manage your teams and your employees through different levels of change and, and understanding that everyone is going to experience that just a little bit differently. So I want to give you a couple different myths and, uh, you know, the myth and the reality that goes with change. Um, and these are, you know, some different real world examples. Um, when I was working in the field, you know, I probably heard these on a weekly, if not daily basis, each one of these myths that we'll go through. Um, so this first one, you know, the myth is this will go away. This is just the flavor of the month something new that management wants to try, just wait it out and, and it'll be over with. Um, you know, change, it's, un, it's important to, to make your teams understand change is here to stay. Um, and, you know, help them to understand this reality that we are changing because we're responding to some outside stimulus that is forcing us to change. Um, you know, this isn't just something management kind of decided to do on a whim. You know, there is purpose. And go back to think, you know, if you don't remember anything else about change, remember this. Um, Change is going to be easier when we understand why. So make sure you're helping your team understand the why behind why we are changing and why it is here to stay. The next myth, um, you know, I can just keep on doing what I've been doing. Um, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the organization. If the organization is on a path of change and it is changing, it's probably certain that you and your department, um, your employees are going to be changing soon. So make sure that you're paying attention to what is going on within your organization so that you can set yourself up to be very prepared when that time comes for, for change within your department and your structure. So, you know, anytime there's change implemented, we're going to have issues. It's going to be a lot rockier. So you're going to hear people say, you know, these changes are all bad. What's wrong with the way we were doing it? You know, uh, it, you know, it doesn't run as smooth as it used to. You know, think about any time you've tried to change something in your personal life. Um, you know, it's never went the way you've planned for mo for the the most part, there's going to be rockiness, there's going to be, you know, hills, peaks and valleys, and um, we have to be adaptable to change and know that everything's not going to run as smoothly as we want it to the first time. You know, wouldn't that be nice if any time we implemented a change and it went just like it was supposed to without any issues? Um, but the reality is, you know, problems are going to be that natural part of change. We're going to have issues. It's all about how well we can adapt and how well we can manage through the change. And that's your job as the supervisor um, or the person in that managerial role. You, know, you are paid to handle problems. That's your, that is, that is a, your job. You're going to be paid to make decisions and handle these problems. Um, and, you know, it, it may seem stressful once you get out there and start working, but I hope you guys remain thankful that you do have a position, you do have a job where you can kind of grow yourself professionally through making these, these um, decisions and being trusted to handle these different issues that you're going to encounter. Because trust me, it will happen. Um, the next one, um, you know, you're going to hear, I promise you, you guys are going to hear this. You know, management is is not telling us the whole story. You know, they're keeping us in the dark on purpose. They don't want us to know anything. And that's not the case, guys. You know, management is telling you and they're being as open as they possibly can. They're telling you as much as they can. You know, oftentimes there are some different aspects that management are not um, privy to talk about. They're not, they, they just can't talk about it 
for the time being. It's not that they're trying to keep anything from you on purpose. They're, they just cannot talk about it at the time. Um, but I want to encourage you guys to, sh you know, when you find yourself in these roles, share as much as you can. That's how you're going to build trust. Um, you know, you've got to take risks to improve. Um, and if you're not continually improving, you know, what's the point? But make sure you're, you know, share as much as you can legally and obligationary. Um, and, you know, be as open with your employees as you can to be able to build that trust factor in there. Um, the last myth we'll talk about just, you know, you will hear, you know, we were doing just fine the way we were doing things. Why, you know, don't fix something that's not broken. Um, you know, we're making change for a reason because we're responding to some kind of stimulus, like we said, out in the environment. And, you know, think back to a couple of, you know, a couple of lectures ago, we said, you know, change is inevitable. You hear people say, we've been doing the same thing, the, you know, this thing the same way for 30, 40, 50 years. You know, if you're not changing, you know, change is constant. You have to change to grow. You have to know the reality versus the myth because you will hear this stuff. You need support and buy-in. If you're not changing, you're not developing as a professional. And if you're not helping to guide your team members through change, you're doing them a disservice by not helping them grow and change as a professional. Um, so, you know, everybody's going to lose if we keep questioning the change. Eventually, you're going to have to either for you know, lack of a better term and lack of a better euphemism, you're either going to have to get on the bus or off the bus. Um, and you're going to have to make that decision in your personal life whether you agree with the change or not. So the supervisor is that that change agent. I would make sure to know this term. Um, and, you know, you'll see this on a lot of resumes, particularly in healthcare. Uh, you know, we change a lot in healthcare. Like we said, it's very dynamic. Change is constant. And so healthcare, you know, when you're going out to start looking for a job or if you're in the middle of changing jobs looking for something else, you know, healthcare is going to look for people who are able to manage through change and have experience in managing teams through change because, guys, let me tell you, it is not easy. It is not easy managing through change. It seems like it should be simple. It seems like it should be fairly simple and straightforward, but it is not, I promise you. Um, so know this term, change agent. Um, you know, know that it, it, it's it's that supervisor, that manager that affects change and makes it happen is very communicative. Guys, a video here just about um, the supervisor as a change agent. I'm not going to play it in this context. I'll let you watch it at your own leisure, but make sure to go in, watch this video, um, learn a little bit more about the supervisor as a change agent. I'm talking a little bit more about it, building off the video. Um, you know, it's up to the, the change agent to really convince and motivate the staff. Uh, that's your job as the, as the supervisor, as the manager in that change environment. Um, so it's not, you know, it's go ahead and prepare yourself. It's going to be natural for people to want to resist. But you have to help them understand the benefit. Change is easier when we understand why. And that's why communication and, and your communication method and channels are so important because you have to help people see the other side and see the benefit, see through all the muck and the confusion and help them understand why this is going to be beneficial. So that means you have to be bought in yourself to the change and you have to understand kind of what's going on. Guys, review over these. Make sure you know what some of them are. I'm not going to go over each one of them individually. Um, you know, you have things like wait and see. I want to point this one out in particular because you don't want to let this become an excuse for procrastination. Procrastination. Sometimes this is good um, to kind of wait and see if things work themselves out, but don't let this become an excuse. Um, reciprocity, just, you know, you give me something, I'll give you something back. Um, but make sure you know what a couple of these different strategies are.
Now I'm going to spend a, a couple minutes here on this slide, uh, more, than, more than normal on the other slides, because I want you to understand the three stages of transition, particularly in change, because it, it's crucial that you kind of get this nailed down and get this correct. So we have three stages starting with, we start with the ending, right? So something is coming to an end. Um, we go into exploration and then new beginnings. So with, in the ending, the change is just about to happen. We're about to stop the old way, start the new way. So from your perspective uh, in that managerial role, this is where you need to be informative. You need to have that communication channel open. Um, we move into exploration. We often see a dip in morale. Maybe people aren't sure really where they are, how they fit in, what they do now. So your job here from an administrative standpoint is to be very, very supportive. And then we move into the new beginning. So we're starting something new. And here it is your job to be that inspirational voice. Um, you know, just to give you kind of an example, let's let's talk about a change that you, maybe you can relate to. Let's so let's say the change is for you to pass this class. Um, we have a new regulation coming down to say that you have to make a 97 and a half or better to pass, or you fail the class. You know, that's a pretty big change. You know, that's a, a pretty big change for for a lot of of this college and a lot of this university. Um, so here's kind of how you would communicate or how I would communicate to you as an instructor working through these three stages. So we have the ending where the change is about to happen. And, you know, I may say something like, um, you know, guys, in this class, because of the academic rigor here at the university, it's going to be very imperative for everyone to have a 97 and a half or better to pass. Um, just so that you know, these are requirements that have come down from SACS, our accrediting uh, body, and these are going to be very imperative for competitive scholarships to continue on in the field. So that's more of how I would communicate that out. You know, be, forward, be straightforward. People appreciate honesty. They want the truth. They don't want you to dance around it. So here's where the supportive part comes in. You may say something like, but guys, I know you can do this, and I really do know you can do this. You know, I'm going to be here to help you along the way. I'm going to help you get through this. I'm going to provide you the resources that you need, the material, the knowledge that you need to, to, to get you through this change. And that's kind of an example of where the supportive part comes in. And then we have, have the new beginnings part where the inspirational aspect comes in. I may say something like, I know you guys can do it. You're going to be the most prepared group of students that I've ever had. Um, you're going to be the most prepared for the workforce. You're going to be able to get jobs as soon as you come out because of these new rigorous requirements. And I know you can do this. So you kind of work through the three stages. Um, you know, just make sure you're there to support your team and help them get through these changes. So guys, we're going to finish up with just a quick review. Um, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff in regards to change today, what the change agent is, a couple different tactics in terms of wait and see, the reciprocity, um, the three M's. We did a, a review over a couple different capital uh, decisions and return on investment. 
and then talking about who your most important asset is. But I want to point your attention to this bottom bullet point here down on the left side, uh, making a plan that's hyperlinked out to a video. Um, and you may watch it and say, what, what does this even have to do with administration and change? Um, this is centered around the 1950s, 1960s. This is when the space race was going on. Um, and it's really just a good example of you know, how we make plans, um, how we respond to change, and how we really make it work. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, you know, as always, please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll pick up next time.